siege of Chitta, siege of Chittagar. In October 1567, the Mughal forces of approximately 5,000 men led by Akbar surrounded and besieged 8,000 Hindu Rajputs in Chittagar fort and within a few months, Akbar's ranks expanded to over 70,000 men and possibly more than 80,000 troops during the late phases of the siege, which ended in a decisive victory of the Mughals. Background the Rajput began to emerge as a dominant power after the defeat of the Lordi dynasty. The Rajputs were opposed to the rise of the Mughal Empire and they often supported Akbar's fellow Muslim rivals including Baz Bahada causing much tension in the region. Akbar set out on a series of campaigns against the Rajputs. Akbar was worried of Mewa Prince Pratap who was a powerful and highly capable Rajput. Akbar feared losing against the Rajputs. He made a plan to kill Udai Singh too but failed. Later on the Mughal army increased day by day in numbers and Akbar got much needed support. Akbar knew that attacking Chittagar fort directly would end in the defeat of Mughals because of Rajput's support to Maharana Pratap in the event. He ordered a siege of the fort of Chitta from all sides to cut off supplies from outside to demoralize the Rajputs. The Mughals had a high amount of cannons and other artillery. In the years preceding, Akbar had fought many battles against the Rajputs and had realized that the Rajput-owned Chittagar fort must be eliminated because it was used as a bastion for those who opposed him. Technology Due to the constant state of war between the Hindu Rajputs and the Mughal Empire, Akbar began to realize the importance of unutilized the Rajput blades known as the Qatar alongside the Mughal tulwars in battle. Akbar began to believe that war elephants were the key to military success and that that a single armored elephant was equal to 500 sowers. He also noted that elephants have the ability to move through the densest of forests clearing through woods and paving way for both the Mughal, sepoys, sowers and cannons. Akbar owned 5,000 well-trained elephants and recorded the use of almost 40,000 across his Mughal empire. Akbar's war elephants were also trained to wrestle other elephants, attack sowers and crumble entire sepoy ranks. He is also known to have replaced pairs of elephant tusks with a pair of double-curved tusk swords. War elephants were also utilized to carry out executions and crush the bodies of all those who fought against the Mughal emperor. The siege The siege of Chittagar began when Akbar and his personal Mughal force of 5,000 soldiers surrounded a six-mile territory around Chittagar fort. On 23 October 1567, Akbar arrived and set up encampments he raised green flags of the Mughal Empire. According to Hindu accounts he also brought large Islamic banners and emblems. His personal presence in the battlefield was a message for the Rajput flanks inside the fort that the siege was not a temporal affair. The next day Akbar unleashed his powerful cannons, but within a few days of the siege it was evident that his mortars needed higher elevation. Akbar then ordered his men to build the Mohar Maji. Akbar also displayed heads of dead villages to incite the Rajputs to come out. After an arduous siege Akbar ordered his men to lift baskets of earth during both day and night, in order to create a hill right in front of the fort by which the Mughal cannons could be placed. When the hill was completed Akbar placed his cannons and mortars near its tip, but the cannons were too slow to breach the thick stone walls of the fort. Akbar believed that the only way to achieve victory and break the deadlock was to blow a hole underneath Chittagar fort. Akbar then organized his sappers to dig two tunnels and to plant two separate mines under the heavy stone walls of the fortress of Chitta. More than 5,000 Mughals then dug their way through a secret tunnel that near the gates of the fort, but one of the mines exploded prematurely during a military assault killing about a hundred Mughal sowers. The casualties on the Mughal side had risen to almost 200 men a day due to Rajput muskets and arches. 
As the siege of Chittagong commenced a massive Mughal army of nearly 60,000 gathered for battle and in this situation, Akbar had prayed for help for achieving victory and vowed to visit the tomb of the Sufi Quadra at Ajmer if he was victorious. As the bombardment and the continuous assaults on Chittagong fort continued, during one particular assault it is believed that a shot from Akbar's own matchlock wounded Jamal the commander of the Rajputs. Since the siege went on for months and with 35,000 civilians and 8,000 brave Rajput warriors in the fort the food storage of the fort ran out of stock the fresh supplies were blocked by the Mughal army who had already surrounded the fort for months did so on Akbar's orders to weaken the Rajputs by hunger and force them to come out and surrender because after months of the siege even with such large numbers of soldiers and weapons the Mughal was not able to get through the strong walls of the fort. That was only when almost all the Rajput women Jora did the Mughals realize that the condition inside the fort was now out of control and the total victory was within grasp. The sack of Chittagong. The fortress of Chitta finally fell on 23 February 1568 after a siege of four months when the garrison then gave up all hope and 15,000 women immolated themselves alive by the right of Jura by jumping in blazing fire to turn themselves and their bodies into ash in order to avoid enslavement and rape by of Mughal soilders who used to rape and dishonor even the dead bodies of ladies in the name of Jihad and the brave Rajput men. Men, wearing saffron clothing smear the ashes of their women and with a tulsi leaf in mouth opened the gates of the fort and rode out to face the vast Mughal army in open battle following the tradition of Saka wherein the Rajputs fight bravely till the last drop of their blood till death rather than surrendering in front of the enemy, even being small in number Rajput army fought so bravely, Jaguar and Saka were not performed when Rajputs fought. Other Hindu rulers in battle, after the brave sacrifice of Rajput men and women, the Mughal army stormed into the fort and killed whoever they found, about 35,000 unarmed civilians including thousands of children and elderly men, were massacred brutally in the fort by the Mughal army and their heads were cut and held onto the walls of the fort as a sign of Mughal victory over the Rajputs and to send a message to other Rajput rulers what would their fate if they didn't surrender to Mughal sovereignty. Akbar then ordered the heads of his enemies to be displayed upon towers erected throughout the region, in order to demonstrate his authority and his victory over the Chittagong. Aftermath the Rajput resistance against the Mughal Empire began to break down. Many Rajput Maharajas and commanders surrendered their forts and founded large Jagirs under Mughal patronage. The large efforts made by the Rajput to eliminate the Mughal Emperor Akbar ended in a devastating rout during the Battle of Haldiati in 1576 and its ruler Maharana Pratap Singh was forced to live in the hills for the next 21 years of his life. Pratap resumed the tactics of guerrilla warfare, using the hills as his base. Pratap harassed the several times larger Mughal armies and therefore awkward Mughal forces in their encampments. He ensured that the Mughal occupying force in Mewar never knew peace. Akbar during his lifetime dispatched many more expeditions to ferret Pratap out of his mountainous hideouts, but they all failed with the heavy losses to the Mughals. At the Battle of Jua the Rajput army defeated the Mughal army. It was one of the big victories of Rajputs over Mughals. After the Battle of Haldiati Maharana Pratap reorganized his army and using guerrilla warfare technique conquered important forts like Kumbalgar. Goganda, Ranthambore and at the last who Daipur was also conquered. 